Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you a build showcase for the Self Curse Headhunter Fire BV build. This is an extremely powerful build and the first thing I'm going to do is show you in a map how it performs. Let's see, this seems uh, an okay map. We do Delirium, we do uh, four of these Scarabs, Harby, Breach, Legion, Elder and we have Sextants on. So let's focus on the map first. I'm gonna show you how the build performs, explain a little bit how it plays and then we're gonna move on to the explanation of the actual build item, passive skill tree and so on. So at first you're gonna have to get rolling, so you're gonna have to kill a few packs which is the tricky part a little bit. It's not that it's not a tricky part, but that's where you actually could potentially die. Um, so we're gonna kill this legion in the beginning. On this build, it's actually nice. Okay, we unfree the screen froze, and we've got a billion buffs already. Okay, so legion early on on this build is extremely cool because you get to steal all of the headhunter buffs very early on, and you get to be super powerful and blow up the whole legion at once. Let's pick up the chaos let's see if we missed uh, any monsters here and as you can see currently i have like 7000 life 11000 es i'm extremely fast i have extreme amounts of damage 12k es it keeps growing uh, it's a really really ridiculous build when it gets going uh, you'll notice that I have on my left click Immortal Call, which is linked to Arcane Surge. Uh, this triggers all the time and it lasts a really long time for me because of the self-curse um, temp chains that extend the duration of all the effects on me, which includes flasks, which includes the BV buff, so I can run for a really long time and actually don't have to press any buttons pretty much. I just run and the BV stays on, the flasks stay on for a very, very long time, so it's a uh, huge quality of life build we don't need to target anything because you know when you're a giant like transparent uh, monster running through the map you can't see that much anyway so if you had to like carefully target things that would be a little bit annoying uh, so that's why the bv is like a perfect skill for this because we don't need to make sure that we're aiming at anything hitting anything with melee skills or anything like that we just run around and everything around us explodes and this is kind of extreme. The, the interesting thing about this build is that it's not so expensive once you have a headhunter. Like headhunter is the majority of the cost. So if you are planning on getting a headhunter or playing with headhunter and wondering like what would be a good build that could benefit from it, this is definitely uh, the build to go if you want to take advantage of headhunter and feel like a god for a little bit. Because it really does feel extremely powerful once you get rolling in a map. Um, as you can see, I'm using like I'm not using the movement skill really because the running is uh, like way faster when you steal uh, the buffs. We're stealing them with inspired learning, uh, as well as with the uh, what's it called? Uh, inspired learning and the headhunter, right? So inspired learning and headhunter they stack together, so you're getting more buffs when you're using both of them. Uh, I have two inspired learnings. Each of them steals one buff when I kill a rare monster, and then uh, headhunter steals the rest. So right now, as you can see, I have like 45 of each, that's like 90 headhunter buffs and you can get to way more. Uh, this really gets uh, absolutely crazy when you stack enough monsters together. Is this fog moving forward? If it's moving forward, then I can go and kill the boss. Boss is dead. Uh, when you have enough buffs, it's usually a good idea to run toward the end of the map, kill the boss before like the majority of the buffs expire from you. Uh, we got Immortal Shrine here as if that wasn't, uh, as if the build wasn't uh, powerful enough, so that's nice. Um, I'm gonna make sure to clear everything. This is like an example of your average map that you're gonna do. I don't have the Watchstones on, uh, but that's okay. We're just doing this to basically show how the build functions, how the build performs in maps. And it's meant to be uh, played in this type of a content, like in maps where you can stack a lot of monsters together. Like stacking beyond is really fun with this build as well. There are a lot of things you can do. Let's go back to where there was some loot. Pick it up. The fog will expire soon. We can kill some extra monsters. Let's open this up. Let's open this. We've got some map, X shard. And I think that's pretty much it. So the fog will expire now and we're gonna get like 90 or 100, I don't know, something like that, splinters we usually get. 94, there we go. That's like an average, regular, normal map. So 
The build itself is based on the headhunter and on cursing yourself with temporal chains. So we have temporal chains and these gloves, shackles of the wretched, which say hexes applied by socketed curse skills are reflected back to you. So we have Herald of Thunder with hexed support with temporal chains and enhanced. So temporal chains is being applied around us when the Herald of Thunder hits something and then whenever it hits around us then it also applies the temporal chains to us and as it applies it the effects that are on us are being slowed that includes flasks that includes BV, immortal call, arcane surge everything everything that's on us is being slowed um, and we also have solstice vigil to stack with that so that the, sh the shaper's presence that you gain when you kill a rare or unique enemy makes it so that effects on you are slowed as well and in order to make this stronger we're stacking um, curse effect so if you get it to if you get like 20 quality on this you get 10 percent increased curse effect and we're also getting enhanced with it to increase the curse effect even more so we get like 36 percent quality on these temp chains so to increase the curse effect we also have increased curse effect from the helmet enchant we have increased curse effect from hex touch support because that gives you also 10 percent increased effect of supported curses uh, from quality so we're using a lot of things to increase that and on top of that we're stacking curse effect on things like the dark discourse 10 percent increased effect of curses all of these give five 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 uh, wish for death is like current calling strike you can get a nerve on these so these um, curse medium cluster jewels is what you want to stack you get like at least four of them um, on top of that we are we have lost also like curse effect here from the skittering, skittering runes and then we have curse effect also from malediction as an occultist so stacking curse effect that's one thing that we're doing another thing that we're doing is um, the solstice vigil uh, other than that, what we're doing is uh, we have Calm's Roots so that we are not slowed by the temporal chains. Um, and the important part now is that from this patch, uh, Hexproof removes curses that are on you. It doesn't just stop um, applying new curses, but it also removes the curses that are on you, which didn't used to be the case before. Like basically the change made it so that when you steal a Hexproof, the temp chains curse disappears from you, right? So that means you you basically remove the curse from you when you kill a rare monster which is kind of like counterproductive to this build kind of wrecks this build so what you need to do is you need to make sure that you can actually still apply curses to hexproof targets hexproof enemies and there are only two ways to do this and one of them is um awakened is this awakened hex touch does that Awaken, Awaken Hextouch gives you a chance, okay? So Awaken Hextouch gives you a chance to apply uh, curse to Hexproof enemies, but in order to have 100% of that, you need either Cost Priest Will or you need to be playing an Occultist. Occultist is great for this um, because you don't need to sacrifice an item slot that otherwise gives you a lot of uh, energy shield as, as well as the Explode. This is the easy way to get the Explode. Uh, that's why the occultist is the preferred choice. Otherwise, you could play any other class with Cosprey's Will. You could, for example, play something like a Juggernaut with Unstoppable, which would give you the Calm's Roots as a passive, and then Cosprey's Will, but you would have to find a way to get Explode from something else. So, for example, like a bow with Implicit um, Explode. That would be very expensive to get, and certainly not in the early stages of the league, um, so Occultist is like the go-to, you just craft a uh, Val Regalia that has Explode on it and you're good to go with the Headhunter comes Roots and all of that. Um, we're using uh, Blade Vortex. Blade Vortex, you can bump it up to level 28 if you get like Empower level 4 here. Uh, so we're using Blade Vortex and we are converting it to fire through uh, this Quiver that converts 50% of the damage to fire and also gives us more fire on top of that. And then we're also converting it through Watcher's Eye that gives us uh, at least, you need to get at least 30% fist damage converted to fire while affected by Anger. and then you also anoint magmatic strikes which converts the last 20 percent that gives you 100 percent chance 100 uh, percent damage converted and that will convert also the explode that's the good part because we're scaling also the explode through for example giving enemies um, like let's say we are uh, cursing with like uh, elemental weakness on head we also are curse we're also like reducing the um, elemental resistances through combustion 
So as you reduce the fire res of nearby monsters and monsters that you hit, with the explosions converted to fire, they also take more fire damage, which is more damage from these explosions, and they end up blowing up an entire legion, like you could see when I was doing the map before. Uh, we're supporting Blade Vortex with Combustion, with Empower, with Inspiration, which gives us crit, more elemental damage and reduced mana, as well as the Inspiration charges lasting forever, uh, so that's uh, pretty pretty neat but i think control distraction like awaken control distraction will be just playing more damage also have increased aoe so that the circle around that can be kind of big um, and then also unleash so that we don't need to cast it that many times if it falls we just press it a couple of times and we have already 10 um, stacks so that's why we are running unleash here as well if you wanted to do more damage you can certainly switch those for even more damage um, i'm running immortal call with arcane surge with enhance and increased duration you can either run regular immortal call and the quality will give you duration or you can run like uh, either Divergent or Anomalous, I don't remember which one it was, but you can run one that gives you um, shorter cooldown on that. So you will have lower downtime on it, like either, low, either higher duration or lower downtime, that's your choice here. Um, so I already explained this, and then we're running Anger, Temp Chains on the Blasphemy, um, Herald of Ash uh, on Enlighten, and this is just like Flame Dash just to move around a little bit in the beginning. Um, these rings, I have a lot of resists on them, like 150 resists almost on each of them, but they would be optimally re replaced for the Herald of Ash rings. Um, and also I would like to add the physical Herald to this build because we got nodes like this, for example, which gives you 15% increased damage for each Herald affecting you. We have two right now, but we can go up to three as well. Um, other than that, Count's Roots, you can get like Corrupted Implicit for like 10% more movement speed. Um, we are also using a Wise Oak and we have highest resistance as Fire here. So Fire Penetration is what we're getting from that. Um, at Series Promise leeches a lot. Uh, this Cinder Solo Orn just gives us a lot of energy shield and life when we're killing enemies, which happens uh, constantly pretty much. And these flasks last forever. Uh, so they're very, very nice. Um, other than that, uh, I already talked about the curse effect enchant, which is pretty important, but on the helmet, you can also craft plus one power charge if you want. You can craft also nearby enemies have minus um, nine to fire resistance. You can also get another curse when you get uh, whispers of doom. You can get another curse here on the blasphemy. You can get flammability, right? But we would need like some reduced curse, reduced mana reservation. So maybe if I crafted like reduced mana reservation, I could get an extra herald here. Um, I would replace something, maybe like the temp chains blasphemy I would get rid of and uh, instead have like flammability here and uh, the other herald um, because we are definitely are really limited on the socket uh, slots because we cannot put a socket in the quiver here because we have to run this specific unique and we cannot put a socket in the boots as well. We could do something with like the remove the immortal call if I really wanted to but I find it extremely useful and it definitely makes you way more tanky. Um, in terms of the passive skill tree we also have two inspired learnings. Uh, inspired learning as you can see uh, when you kill a rare monster you gain one of its modifiers. Headhunter says you gain its modifiers so you gain all of them but with inspired learning you gain one um, and you have another one here that gives you another so you get to two modifiers from this on top of the what you steal with headhunter they need four notables around them um, picked from the passive tree in order to be active here is like a little bit of a weaker spot because resourcefulness is nice soul thief is nice um, extra frenzy charge also nice kind of because we do gain frenzy charges and then the life which doesn't really do that much for me um, but i guess it's still okay to have so that's how we activate this one and the other one we get the aoe we get the um, herald damage and reduce mana reservation and we get also 10 percent uh, curse effect as well as a maximum power charge uh, so those are the choices of these for large cluster jewels what you want to do is you want to get like sadist on them you want to get widespread destruction and you want to get prismatic heart for the resistances that also is very helpful um, and then also jewels here i'm going to be putting are going to have like you can have crit multi you can have max life or max es um, you can also have um, what else is there 
resistances right you can fit your uh, fill in your, your resistances with that you can have uh, stats that you need if you need like more decks or strength you can put that in as well uh, so that's what that slot is for and that's pretty much the build like it is very very powerful for mapping doing content like that you can do simulacrums on this however simulacrums are not the best for this i wouldn't recommend it if if simulacrums are what you want to farm i personally don't enjoy simulacrums i definitely do enjoy tropical islands and farming uh, tropical islands or like uh, delirious maps stuff like that this is what this build is made for and it's pretty freaking amazing for that um, i'm playing it on my stream pretty much i stream every day like morning noon early afternoon european time so you can check that out a uh, link to the stream is in the description thank you guys for watching and see you next time